This is Twit. One day before Google's developer conference, Google I.O., Nest Labs announced a new developer program and API that opened Nest's Protect Smoke Alarm and Learning Thermostat to developers and other smart home devices. Google acquired Nest Labs in January. And Joe Panettieri, this is uh, both cool and scary because everybody, you know, lots and lots of companies are coming out with their own platform. Everyone right. is saying, we want everyone to talk to each other, but... As we know, when everybody has a different standard, a different platform, that's exactly what doesn't happen. Uh, but this one is powerful because, of course, Nest is owned by Google. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah, you know, I think what's interesting here, Mike, is, is to your point, this whole ecosystem play where, yeah, everyone talked to each other, but by the way... Uh, we're going to be at the center of the ecosystem is, is sort of the uh, the platform play going forward for, for each of these companies that are trying to compete here. The, the question uh, that I'd like to raise is, is similar to an editorial I saw yesterday, I think, in the, in the Wall Street Journal. Um, can these solutions really simplify going forward? And, and what I mean by that is <laughs> there's not much, much, there aren't things that are much simpler than, than the light switch and, and your home thermostat. And if they're already working pretty darn well, are these new solutions just complicating things or, or does it really get easier? And, uh, you know, as companies like Whirlpool begin to plug, in, plug into these ecosystems, do things really get better or do you get worse? So, Mike, any early thoughts there? Absolutely. I have two uh, thoughts that are both relevant to the announcement that Nest made, mm -hmm. one of which is the Whirlpool uh, company, which makes washers and dryers and other home appliances. Uh, they're one of the apartment, uh, one of the partners that was announced. Uh, others include IFTTT, the sort of, automation uh, website that allows you to build little macros to automate things. Jawbone, Logitech, mm -hmm. Mercedes-Benz, Chamberlain. We'll get into some of these in a minute, but Whirlpool's point is that it's not about convenience. It's about energy efficiency. So mm -hmm. they emphasize the fact that, you know, it's a hot day, it's 100 degrees outside, you've got the air conditioner blasting, and you, you're running the washer and the dryer. These can be coordinated and also they can determine whether or not you're home. So if you leave the house and you have all those things running, uh, they can say, okay, you know what? We're going to turn off the wash machine. We're going to turn off the air conditioner and just run the washer. When the washer's done, we'll run the dryer. And if you come home, we'll turn on the air conditioner again. That sort right. of thing. That, that could be very powerful in terms of, uh, you know, the cost of energy and also energy efficiency. And, and it's good for the environment and that sort of thing. So there are little subtle benefits that uh, are, are, totally divorced from the idea of, you know, is it too inconvenient to turn off a light switch? You know, that whole question. The other right. thing that's really cool, the biggest partner, of course, in all of this was Google itself. So <laughs> they announced that Google now is going to support the Nest platform. And so that means you just walk in the house, you have strategic uh, microphones planted here and there, and you just talk and just say, you know, talk to, to Google now, or, you know, it'll notify you in some other way. But basically, you'll be able to interface with your appliances by voice and also you get some sort of preemptive information uh, on your phone or whatever the device is you happen to be looking at. For example, it'll say, you know, your your dryer needs service or your garage door opener is stuck or, you know, can notify you of little things seamlessly along with all your other notifications. So yep. that's another, it's not just, it's just not just what they could do with this particular solution. It's what it implies uh, about the possibilities of all these appliances talking to each other in one seamless uh, system that it also has an interface like Google Now that you're probably going to be using anyway. Right. And so right. that's super powerful. And of course, Google has already, Google and their partners have already demonstrated home automation with Google Glass. Right now, Google Glass is a big, clunky, dorky thing. In the future, it'll just be seamlessly almost invisible inside your the glasses you're already wearing. And so it'll be something uh, altogether different to be able to interface with your appliances. One of the most uh, interesting home automation solutions for Google Glass is that uh, control exists. So you can basically call up the control for every de any device you happen to be looking at, and you can sit, you know, turn it up, turn it down, set the timer or whatever, and it's all floating in space in front of you. They're not physical buttons, physical controls. And, of course, you don't have to be standing in front of the device to do that. You can do it in the other room. Very convenient. So it's an exciting, uh, it's an exciting uh, area. And I also think it has to... Uh, be said that uh, we, we reported yesterday that Quirky is launching Wink, which is another similar, kind of similar uh, effort uh, on the part of Quirky. Quirky's, Quirky's a sort of startup-oriented uh, company where they take inventions and they turn them into products you can buy. Wink is a platform that's uh, designed to automate the, uh, you know, and bring together 
the Internet of Things and home automation and that sort of thing. Nest also said that more than 5,000 developers expressed interest in this platform. I don't know if that's a yeah, lot yeah. or not a lot. You, you know what, like Mike? I, I think that really caught my attention as well. And and the question always there, the question there always is, is, well, what do you mean by interest, expressed interest? Are they really on board or are they not? The fastest way to freeze a market as, as small startups begin to come into this market is to be the giant and claim all your developers are going to rally around you. And building on some of the themes you just shared, if, if you look out uh, a few months or a few years, could we actually see appliances with some sort of something similar to the Intel Inside campaign from years ago where it's Nest Inside for all these appliances? And and what about energy ratings and star ratings, things of that nature? Does some, Google somehow spin that forward? So, and, and, and take it then to the next level. So you've got the hardware providers maybe with these logo programs, and then you have the software developers writing the apps to get onto the hardware, and you could have a really, you can really interesting ecosystem emerging here. But um, you know, I keep coming back to those keywords that uh, that Google used, and that was expressed interest. A lot of people expressed interest in things. That doesn't mean they're going to act on them. Yeah, it, it means that they didn't have the 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 gall to to, say uh, no. <laughs> to tell Google to take a hike. We're not even going to think about it. Go, you know. Get out of here. You know, oh, that's another interested party. We've got another sign up. Um, yeah, I mean, it doesn't mean anything, really. Uh, but but I do think that they will get interest if it's a elegant platform. If mm -hmm. Google really gets behind it, the thing that I'm curious about is what is Google going to announce tomorrow at Google I.O.? Are they going to push this as the home automation solution or are they going to offer an alternative? Google is very comfortable with offering multiple alternatives to everything. And uh, that kind of leaves developers with uh, scratching their heads and not really sure which way to proceed. But if they get completely behind Nest Labs' solution here, forget about it. It's going to be a very important standard for home automation. So we'll see how that goes. Um, we'll learn more. You know, we'll know more this time tomorrow uh, whether Google's going to get all the way behind this, whether they're going to resurrect their Android at home platform. Um, if I had to uh, guess, if I had to predict, I would say that they're probably going to have multiple platforms. They're probably going to talk about an Android at home type solution. Plus, they're going to have this. They'll probably trot out the Nest Labs founders, uh, Tony Fidel and Matt Rogers uh, on stage. Uh, but, but I think they're going to have probably multiple platforms. We'll see how it goes. Um, we'll also probably see some integration with, with Android Wear so that you can use your, your uh, wearable device to control your... Uh, garage door opener so yeah, yeah. And, and mike one one closing thought from me on this is um you know yes google has a lot of different platforms but if you really think about it where do all lead all roads lead to right now i i increasingly believe that everything google announces at, at io there'll be some sort of google cloud platform hook meaning that as google tries to compete more effectively against amazon web services and microsoft azure anything that Google announces, they want people to move their workloads, their new apps, their new initiatives, their new developments over to the Google Cloud platform. So we'll be watching that closely too.